Seems that way. I mean, apparently I was muted for, for like half the first game, but that's entirely my fault. Uh, What's going on next door here? I was just thinking the same thing, yeah. 4 6 is a very close game. I'm kind of impressed. Uh, I think Banazama is the Selinka one trick, so to speak. Oh, so they're think, branching out. Yeah, if I'm remembering the right person. I think you are correct. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of exciting, and they're doing very well, considering they're up against Byron's Eugenia, which is no slouch. <laughs> hmm. If that bottom set of cards is known, that's very interesting. Oh. Oh. I see. <laughs> okay, I didn't zoom out far enough. I mean, I assume that's known, because I can't think of another reason it would be face up. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta be. Uh, 25. EX, EX Donkey Kick is what a freaking card. 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 16, 29. Why is he short a card? Uh, maybe his gauge is, his gauge is 4 deep. Oh, his gauge is 4. Okay, there we go. Oh, he is four gauge. Okay, <laughs> that's important. <laughs> that's an important. Four is the number of their gauge, and the number of the gauge is four. <laughs> it exceeds three, but five is right out, and all that jazz. Uh, okay, so that looks like a parry on Metsu Hado, which I think is exactly correct. <laughs> uh, yes. Yep. Yes, then, at the spacing. Yeah. And at four health. Yep. Uh, because even if even if Ryu doesn't. Like, even if you can't throw it safely, uh, he, he can boost it, and it's an incredibly good boost. Hmm. Looks like he's spending force to move in so that he can threaten the Metsu at range 1. Yep. I mean... Of course. I'm good answer. Absolutely. It is a sensible thing. The question I'm actually looking at now is, who's have they reshuffled yet? I'm assuming they haven't. Uh, just because he's got four attacks engage and none of them are key charge. So that tells me that there's some damage being thrown back and forth. Although, I don't know. It's weird for her not to have any gauge unless she landed an ultra at some point. Like, I'm trying to figure out why she has no gauge and only one transform and he's at four life. I mean, Shimmer's out. Oh, well, that's true. If he hasn't, but that doesn't stand necessarily up. mean anything. Yeah. Like I thought, oh gosh, he only has two cards, and then I, I saw the other four, and I'm like, oh, that's much better. Yeah. I'm just like, where? How did she get her damage in? Is I guess what I'm curious about. Because if she did it with attacks, I'd expect more gauge. Because he doesn't, Ryu doesn't really pace the game fast enough that like people need to change cards aggressively against him. Um, if she lands in an ultra, that would make a lot of sense. But. And then I, excuse me. And then I guess you like you land the ultra and then you change cards with it the next turn. But the other way that I see her damage come out in most games when I play her, especially, is time for tea. Because I'm a horrible, horrible person. Uh, and that's I will often throw gauge into time for tea. Mm -hmm. I mean that seems like a decent uh, cash out, so to speak. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I'm also curious whether this is game one. If it's game one, then they probably have reshuffled. If it's because that's a very long game one, it's probably game two. Oh yeah, I guess. What were our life totals? Eighteen o. Just taking notes. <clears throat> That's a lot of defense. I mean... It's really just two armor, of course. Two armor and stun immunity. <laughs> the question is, is like, what do you... <sighs> like... I guess makes grass pretty good. Like you push out and then live. Well, no, you still die to things like sweet. 
trying to. I mean, it might just be a stall play. Like but what, why the no why T? The spike so um, right. I mean, Ryu could have a focus left if he does. Getting rid of the normals is sensible. Otherwise, that makes... otherwise assault is the is the reason that I would buff up like that. It's four to four. Four to four. Yeah. Razor's Edge. Yeah. Actually, or a focus because focus beats Metsu Shoryu with with the extra armor, right? At four armor total. Um. Oh. Four armor total against seven power, so th yeah, would... three. So he could weather it. Yeah. There's the There's ultra boost coming out. Reuse. On um, the Hado can boost to counter that. Yeah. Uh, oh no, the Hado can boost came out first, and then. Oh, came out. got the oh Metsu. Oh my gosh, he got the Metsu. Oh, <laughs> that might be the death now. No, nope. I I don't think Not so. Like. I mean, it depends on what these other four cards are. That's true, but I feel like that's the reason that Eugenia couldn't strike. I'm also not entirely sure she remembered to draw afterward, but I'm, I'm also oh, was, not going to... Was there a speed... It. Was there a speed five reveal? Yeah, Absinthin. Oh, Absinthin's still revealed. Yeah, he just kind of left it out. <laughs> yeah, but that's... Second oh, Hado... No. Oh, okay. This armor <laughs> we <will> wanna... not... <laughs> Well, the armor won't help him, but the power sure could. See, Who has grasp I, is the question right now. <laughs> qu other question is, does the other Shoryu can still exist? Oh man, if the other um, Metsu Shoryu or the other Shoryu are out, that would be that. Then Eugene is going to keep hanging back and playing a defensive oh. game. Okay, she's getting out of the. way. All right, so that tells me the other Metsu Shoryu is probably up, and well, both Hadokens are both down. Both Hadokens on the table. So, so now she's uh, so she's threatening absinthe and arrow, and he can't do anything to respond to it. So he has to he has to move in just to have anything that can deal with. I that. mean, if he, if he reuse and has dive or uh, Tatsu, Tatsu or yeah. anything, I think Tatsu. I think he needs Tatsu, right? Because uh, he's no, got never mind. Four never mind. armor, he's got five armor, three guard. He can anything that Wait, literally what? reaches. No, he's no, got no. both Hadoukens. Yeah, they're only one armor. Oh, only one armor. Well. But still, yeah, that is four arm. That is uh, three armor total, which is enough to cover. No, it isn't enough to cover absinthe, is it? No, no, uh, we don't take one. There's a spike boost also. Yeah, yeah. So absinthe would. So absinthe can deal a max of four damage in this situation because he wouldn't drop too low on cards in hands to be affected by. Okay. Oh, he spent the gauge. He spent the gauge. All right. So Metsu Shoryu is dead forever, but Shoryu, regular Shoryu, is very alive because he still has one gauge. And if he doesn't spend it, he should overhead into something that kills. Yes, because overhead, like, cross from here is pretty darn lethal, as we say. A minute ago, I felt like this was over in favor of Eugenia. I'm not so sure anymore. Second cat's cradle. That's just rude. Well, I say that. I mean, if, if he's threatening to show you, I feel like that's a very good play by her. Eh, it gets rid of the Don Kick. We already knew about that. She needs to draw. She does, okay. But yeah, overhead cross. Uh, and I think that's his only speed six, right? Is the natural one. Um, yeah. So yeah, overhead cross. Well, other than Hadouken, but obviously both Hadoukens are down. Oh, there are, cro there are quests this week. I didn't even know there were quests. Oh no, there aren't. Um, did you just pull up my stream? Yeah. So, so before the tournament started, I asked chat for a month, and somebody said July. So I pulled July ah. 2018 organized play, <laughs> and those are my quests for this tournament. I see. My personal quests. Well, you picked a good team to deliver on that quest. Except for the tag battle one, that's kind of impossible. Yeah, that one's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. If I play Sidian Serena, I feel like I get partial credit. Um, yeah, seems legit. All right, so we have a strike with no overhead, but he does have plus four power on the board. So, like, to me, the obvious threat is Cross, which is power seven here. And she has two armor, so she would need two more armor to survive. So if she has the focus, she can play it quote-unquote safely against that, right? 
Yeah. So that would two four. Drop her to armor. one. He retreats. Yeah. She draws, and then she hits him with absinthe in for lethal. Yeah. Yeah. So the obvious side so is crossed, which means the mix-up is bike. Or it's an assault. Or it's an assault or a dive, both of which would be enough over the damage threshold that she would have to play block instead. She wild swings. She plays dive. It is assault. That looks like game, right? Yeah. Yeah, eight power assault two armor. Comes in. He punches her big lots. Yes. Very good. Much advantage. Mm-hmm. GG. I wonder what fast card she had left. I like how we're doing, uh, like, just comparing to the one time we did that commentary video and we're trying to do... That was so much you know, fun. It was fun, but I'm just amused by the contrast between us trying to, like, carve out these moments of insight to now it's... Yeah, he punched lots. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty good summary of, well, a lot of characters, but especially Ryu. Notably, it's not a good summary of any character that Byron actually plays. Oh my gosh, I just saw the swap. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't have any luck with Eugenia, <laughs> so I'm playing freaking Rene. I mean, you know his his actual tournament team is Eugenia, Renea, Yumina. Like, wow, he is the control player. <laughs> that is that is rude on a level that I... <laughs> I... I know, right? But but I love it because he's also like... He's like he's the control player that we don't have in the meta. There are so few people who actually try to run control. And he's a very good player. So going up against him feels very different from fighting anybody else. He plays much more of the mind game than, than, in, than the actual fighting game of Exceed. Whereas I play Carl, I punch lots. Yes. Yes. Well, you and I learned to love the mix up um, long ago. And and we, we play very. We, we play very Exceed. <laughs> it's true. And it, it, I, I worry one day. I played. Who was it? Um, one of the, the, the newer folks on the Discord, and I, I played their Minato. Like. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my god, another Minato player. This is going to be great. I'm looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. Yep, I was excited to meet someone else who runs one of your mains. And they played this Razor's Edge of a Minato. <laughs> like, uh, like exceeding before first discard Minato. Before first reshuffle oh, Minato. Oh, before reshuffle. Okay, all right. That is, that, is a, that is a hardcore aggressive Minato. That is not standard Minato at all. That it was. That it was Oberoi very Bruma. much. I mean, <laughs> it was. It was very much. I think it was both games. I think I was playing uh, Imogene of all characters in this in this matchup, but the, uh, which is again like leaning heavily on having seen a thousand battle a thousand times before. But they would. They were playing. They would literally just dump their hand, dump their discards, and be like, "I have both Hellwards. I have both cab stands. I don't care." <laughs> um, I respect that. And <laughs> and they and they just literally, I I couldn't, I. Imogene's not a character who can easily exploit that, nope. by either predictability or discard effects. So I was like, yeah, well, I, I have to stand there and and watch this. Um, I think I killed them one game, by uh. The. The evil forcing within. them to wild swing yeah. boost. Evil within, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking, I'm like, yeah, that's ex that's the ex that is the tool she has to exploit a Monado who actually tries to run out of deck. Yeah, uh, but it's the evil only within. Where it worked once and did not work the other time. There was one uh, time I was I was even like, oh, you just played the Hellward. I'll just make you play it, and then you'll uh, it'll be invalid, and you'll deck out. And they're like, well, no, it's perfectly valid. And I'm like, right, you have nothing in your deck in hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or deck in discard. And I was like... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, it was it was refreshing. And it was, uh, it oh, was yeah. fascinating. But uh, just like... I was coming... I had a point to this. The point is, like, it's crazy to see some of the meta variations. But I sometimes worry that us playing quote-unquote exceed 
that we that one day I will be vulnerable to someone who's like, I don't I don't want to play Exceed. I'm gonna just play Minato. I mean, I'm excited about that prospect because when they do that, that's when we have to learn and adjust and adapt. Like that that moment where we're like, yeah, we're we're doing this, and somebody comes in and is like, oh, I have this take on this character that works like this, and we can't deal with it with our play styles means that we have to find a way to deal with it and that's what's exciting to me i mean it, it's I, I guess the 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 thing is it's sort of like the the guile world tour which ended up with a i think good but not overwhelming win rate yeah guile versus the world is at like um i mean i guess i can just go literally pull that up right let's see 49 wins 28 losses as of last record i mean that's that's very good that's very good, but I don't know if I would count that as, like, meta-defining. No, no. I mean, it, it puts him as solidly, like... I don't know. It, it, it's, it's hard to judge because of all the other silliness and the fact that it's me playing nonsense. But uh, I feel like it establishes him as one of the strongest characters in the game on the order of, like, top 10. Um, but I do think that, like, that's, 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 let, that's, like, played raw. Like, by, and by the same token that Sajin is one of the most powerful characters in the game, if you just, if you let her do her thing, right? Right. But when you know and how her thing works, you can deal with it. And when you know how Guile works, you learn that you just play reading at the right time, and he folds. So, like, I got destroyed by Byron in a tournament, I think, uh, playing Guile into his something, Renea, I think. But it's like, yeah, I, I, my Guile playstyle folds against control because you know everything. <laughs> everything is face yep. up. It's just, it's just a b big pile of stats. <laughs> and very good stats. Very and good stats. Uh, e even, and even with those stats, the occasional mix up where it's like, preemptive okay is it speed seven something you can't stop or is it speed five crushing guard right exactly and that that to me is the part that i enjoy is the fact that i can have those mix-ups at incredibly high risk reward ratios um that's obviously fun to me i, I yeah. suspect that like an optimal guile player is going to take the same line of play and then adapt it so that they're just playing safely consistently but even that will expose a weakness, right? I think I think if you slow play it too hard, again, you do hit the end of your deck and you hit that reading and you're like, well, mm -hmm. darn. And to be fair, you can also super aggressively filter and then you're at the end of your deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, he, it, it's very noticeable while he does have a super powerful ignore guard options, does not have an ignore armor option. That nope. isn't spike. That is important. That is very important. Um, like I, sorry, I just just to sort of finish the the capstone of what I was saying is yeah, I yeah. like the 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 I love the opportunity to play it. I still have that faint moment in my mind where I'm going to walk into something in tournament and someone's going to play three things and I'm be like, well, I have never seen that before in my life, and that <laughs> looks like the dumbest thing I've seen in Exceed to date. What the heck just happened? <laughs> I mean. I I don't I guess, I guess I just I don't see the I don't see the downside. To me that sounds like to me that's exciting. I want to see people play w in ways that I haven't thought of. I mean it's it, it's true uh, I will I think I can can uh voice the difference. Um last year's Tekken World Tour um World Tour Championships um was won by uh, a gentleman by whose tag is Rangchu, who's a Japanese player, which is notable because uh, Tekken is traditionally dominated by Koreans. Um, not that other countries are particular slouch, it's just that, like, of the, I would say of the top ten, five of them are known, are Korean players. But the more notable thing was he was playing Panda, who um. <laughs> is a giant panda. Oh, good. Okay. Well, that's that seems appropriate. Um, and as a giant panda, it was not very commonly played and was actually regarded as one of the worst characters in the game. Um, there are 
uh, in a very combo heavy game like Tekken being very large is bad because while it may give you good limbs and range, there are literally quote unquote bear specific combos because there's two bear characters in the game. Um, Wait, there's multiple bear characters? There is Kuma, who is the original bear, and then Panda, who is a panda, using the same basic uh, model with a different skin. Um, at least that's how she was introduced back in, I think, Tekken 3. They've since differentiated a lot more because graphics. Sure. But yes, there are, there are two bear characters with a bear-related skill set. All right, this is great. This is the best fighting game ever. <laughs> what was the point? I'm sorry. <laughs> I really got sidetracked in the whole bear thing. Um. The point, the point being, <laughs> it was someone who came out of nowhere with a character nobody had seen before. Nobody had seen before, but I say nobody, nobody had seriously. really respected at the world mm. stage to the point where when the creator uh, Harada the director of the game comes out the first words out of his mouth on the sort of victory speech introducing he's just like panda really panda <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing and I, yeah no it, it, it's a fantastic story and he it was a, it's a fantastic a fantastic player getting success that they deserve mm -hmm. and I guess what I'm saying is I don't... There's nothing that happened... Oh, dear. That's not supposed to happen. Okay. Uh, there's nothing that happened in that run that was not in the game already. People mm -hmm. had played Rang 2 and been like, oh, no, this guy is real. Um, it, literally, the tournament was a, one of those Cinderella story sequences where it's like, oh, yeah, he's good, but he always loses to this guy and this guy. Mm -hmm. But what if he didn't? Mm -hmm. um, and he beat all of his demons all the way up and through the grand finals and won. Mm -hmm. So in a game like Exceed, there is a brief moment where we might, and I, I, I strongly doubt this, especially with season two, um, where somebody will do this, that, this, and we'll go, wait, what? Is that even supposed to be a mm -hmm. thing? I mean, Big Guile is very much a... I was gonna say, I think I think that happened with Guile. Uh, not, right. not at a tournament, but like... I feel like that's what that's exactly how Guile came into being. It was like, oh, what? <laughs> Nobody thought of this. Um, right. So I, I guess mm -hmm. I am the 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 outside chance that we will have a sudden sudden surprise big Guile at tournament to the point where I have to like literally pull open Discord to I am Brad while I'm playing this other person and be like, <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> um. That is the only difference. I would love to be surprised. I would hate to be surprised by something that really in Jenkins the situation. Well, as as a okay, I have to, like you remember. At I, the have end of season, like, I have to say it this okay. way. I have to say this. Okay, as a Gaspar main. <laughs> Point. Now, now let me let me clarify that for those in the audience who don't know, um, Gaspar is the jankiest. One of the two jankiest characters in Battlecon, a similar game but not the same. Um, he is jankier than Umina, who is the most complex character in season two. Um, Gaspar's shtick is that he spawns duplicates of himself, little clones, who emulate his attack with slight variations, so that he's acting multiple times in the same turn. This actually makes him a little bit like Hunter of Men's Ultic Seed mode. If you know how Hunter of Men works, you're probably wrong because it works in a very unintuitive way. If you actually know how it works, my sympathies, because it must have been a pain to figure it out. Um, As an aside, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I hate to interrupt, but have you seen how much gauge is going on in this game? Yeah, I don't understand what <laughs> is happening before my eyes. But please has continue. Hilarious, insane amounts of gauge. Um, but yes, so the thing of oh lord, that's an ex Metsu Hadoken coming up. Which what is, a hand. Which is what funny. a hand. But I don't think there's anything that she can do that beats that. Whoa. That sure. Oh, he's just going to play the. Okay, well, that's fair. I mean, yeah, critically, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Whew. I guess she called his dive, hoping that he would jump in. Yeah. Alright, now that's And now she gets borked. And, well, yeah. he can. She might be able to block, but. Yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, so the thing about... So when I say as a Gaspar main, here's the thing. I have... I main Gaspar. I love him. He's... Oh, I can turn the camera back on. I'm done eating. Um, so let me just... Let me just say this to the camera. 
once I push the button that actually makes it visible again, right? I love Gaspar. He is one of my two favorite characters in Battlecon. The other is Terry. And the thing I love about him is that he does a bunch of things. He does a lot of nonsense. And it's really fun to me to, like, get all the pieces to interact in the right way so that I can do the thing that I want to do. And it's like solving a puzzle, a very elaborate, unnecessarily complicated puzzle, but getting it to work the right way, and then doing something that my opponent cannot necessarily have been prepared for. Here's the problem with that. Time after time after time after time. I have been across the table from somebody playing as Gaspar, my, my beloved main, and they go, wait, is that how that works? And and they, mm. they made a misplay because they didn't realize how something worked. They they did something, like, they, they made a strategic plan, they made a strategic decision, and then they found out that, oh no, actually, that is ruled differently than you would think because it's Gaspar. And so now their decision was a mistake, and we, it's too late to take it back because, you know, we've already revealed things. And that's the worst feeling ever. Is like, I'm not outwitting my opponents, I'm beating them by accidents. And that's... Threw the focuses away? What is going on here? I think the game just ended. Oh, oh, okay. Never mind. Wait. No, that definitely was a raw 5 gauge exceed. Uh, stealing both foci. Uh, well then. Wait, what? Hold on. Did she. She actually spent 5 gauge. Wow. <laughs> what is going on here? Uh... Yikes. Okay. Um, so, yes, the, the thing that I. So, so I agree with you on the sense that, like, I would really hate to be in that situation where at Worlds, and honestly, I half expect it would be me, but if it's not me, it's, it's going to be somebody else who does a thing, and then we're like, wait, that's not how that works. And they go, oh, it actually is because of this and this. And we're like, oh, well, I wouldn't have played the way that I played if I had known that, because that's a terrible feeling, and I don't want that to happen to anyone. Um, and... Yeah, like that feeling of like, oh, if I had understood how my opponent worked, I would have made different decisions. And I don't know if it would have helped me win, but it sure wouldn't have helped me lose as much as the decisions I did make. Like, that's an awful feeling, and I don't want to wish it on anybody. So I, so I agree I don't like the injankening. Uh, that said, we both play the characters that are the worst culprits of this. You know, I play Cyrus, I play Emina, and I you play, play Minato. And you play the Jane Queen, Jeanette. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> You're just remembering the Drash game with Charnel Blast yes. and going six armor worth of transforms. Yes, and to be fair, both Jeanette and uh, uh, both Dejanki and Sydney and Serena have had that thing where, like, well, and and Galdred all actually made use of the horribly janky mechanic that was only recently retconned, right? And I'm glad that they retconned that. Um, you were aware of the retcon to the transformer card from hand, right? Yes, it's, yes. You, you can no longer transform a card that doesn't have a transform symbol. Exactly. And it's like, yeah, that was a really janky rule that often would take people by surprise. And I'm glad they got rid of that because of, for that exact reason, that I would do it in games and people would go, wait, what? Like, you can do that? And for me, it's fun to figure those things out, but it feels terrible to spring them on someone. So, I hear you. 100% agreed. Yeah. Um, now, I'm looking forward to, on the other hand, the person who goes, oh, I'll do this and this, and we're like, oh, yeah, I guess you can do that. And we just never thought of it before. <laughs> uh, like, specifically the transformation that Renee had just put into play, like, how that interacts with every mechanic in Street Fighter is amazing, right? <laughs> because the, the some of the continuous boosts in Street Fighter are bizarre, and yeah. Uh, so like inter interactions between mechanics that players think of that we haven't thought of yet because we haven't had enough time or we just haven't played the right combinations of characters and matchups to see them that I'm really looking forward to because I think there's a lot of combinatorial expansion that's going to happen with weird evolving jank uh, control characters will be where the thick of it exists I'm sure so you and I might never really see the thick of it but, I, but players like Byron will well, this is a pretty good how do you do. Yeah, but that's why a he hand. Would Ryu, why he would Ryu back one in the face of this, I'm not sure. Why did he Ryu back? Yeah, wait, if he ryu back, he should have just played, like, oh, well, sweeps oh. in play, sweeps in play. 
Oh, so he doesn't want to get speed nine. Yeah, he doesn't want to get stunned out of... Because none of that hand has defense on it, so... That's fair, actually. Uh, I'm going to read up and chat a bit. Okay. <laughs> Blue says he needs to get a good dumb ruling question for Gaspar so he can ask Marco. <laughs> um, yes, asking Marco ruling's questions is only a good idea. Uh, Tundra says... That I have said my win rate overall is 50%, referring to me, D, Tiernkin, and I often pass on short lethals with Guile, this is true. So wouldn't, my, wouldn't it seem like my win rate with him is game-breakingly high? So, okay, to be totally blunt, the other side of that is that I played against a wide variety of players, mo many of whom I knew well, many of whom did not know Guile well. And part of the thing with it is that I had, like, the Guile line of play, especially when I first started it, people didn't know what to do about. Like, people just didn't know how to answer it. So I had an edge through a lot of those games that I did not necessarily deserve. Like, because I know my opponent's character inside and out most of the time. If they're a Season 2 character, I probably have all of their cards memorized. Uh, if they're a Season 1 character, I probably have most of them memorized. And I'm playing Guile. He's from the newest set. A lot of people have barely played against him. Some, play some people hadn't seen him in action at all. That was true of Kanashimi, for example. Uh, Jackie. And, yeah, like... Then I do this thing, and they're like, I have no idea what to do about this, because you just don't know what to do when your opponent's drawing 14 cards. Um, and then striking. Multiple turns. So there, there's an edge to that that I feel like makes that win rate look higher than it is. I think realistically, Guile still, like, all things being equal, I feel like my win rate with, with him would have been noticeably higher than my normal win rate, which is part of what makes me say I think he's a very strong character. But I do think that it uh, would lean toward being much worse in matchups that are based on, like, control. So, like, Byron's entire team I favor against my Guile, except maybe Eugenia, because she just doesn't have a draw stats. Um, okay. Paid two force for Mimesis. Yep, so they're, they're now in countdown. In countdown. Alright, let's see. Uh, Drunk Critical Squid. Critical Ooh. That should be it? Or is that a block? That's a block. Of course it is. <laughs> Can't be over. Uh, so, Jeanette, Jank Queen? Yes, Jeanette, or uh, D apostrophe J-A-N-K-Y was our was our old name for her in playtesting. Because she was janky. Because um, the circle or because it's weird? Partly, it's a little bit of everything. Because she has a lot of control effects in her kit that are indirect. And she has a lot of interactions that make you go, oh, what? So, like, Charnel Blast counting transformations back when you could transform ordinary cards, and it doesn't count transformation, it counts cards in transform area, was a piece of jank. Um, your special attacks have plus zero to one range, but your ultra attacks don't. Always trip people up. Always trips people up. Um, the boost on innervation, giving the opponent minus one, minimum and maximum range, drops at zero. Always messes people up. Uh, affliction of being able to play an instant boost during a strike so that you can play and resolve the backstep or run boosts to move during a strike as a hit effect with a boost from hands. That is glorious, Jank. So, yeah. <laughs> She's super fun, though. Uh, uh, play simple characters that don't need to worry about forcing dumb rulings on the opponent. That's fair. Also try to know the rulings, because it's fun. Yep. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Jeanette is actually really, really fun to play. Um, she is... If I didn't dislike her aesthetic, or either if I... I don't dislike her aesthetic. I just don't care about her aesthetic. If I cared for her aesthetic, she would be, like, on my mains. But I just don't think she looks as cool as some of my other favorites. I'm sorry, Mad. Um... Never forgive you. 